First of all, I appreciate being having an opportunity to share my thoughts about the great presentations of Session 2 of ICAIH, The Promise and Perils in the Era of Technology. Many people have mixed feelings about technology, especially something brand new like AI because we do not know exactly about it. The Janus's face of technology can be mystified as exerting absolute power that makes us mindlessly and obediently accustomed to features it provides. Some are fascinated by the benefits it provides and others shun away from and closes their minds against it. I am personally fascinated by brilliant ideas that presenters suggested in their presentations. I hereby go in a one-by-one -one fashion for sharing my comments and questions about the presentations. First of all, Roy Gern, in his presentation, Proactive Management of Digital Fear, Using the Kuber-Ross Model and Iterative Participatory Design to Develop a Research Literacy Governance Circular Continuum, introduces his very interesting study that actively searches ways of alleviating digital concerns. By using several tools, that is, concepts such as digital concern, early intervention, and the Kubler-Ross model, he convincingly suggests that adopting the iterative participatory patterns effectively lead to developing a research literacy governance circular continuum. I am totally agreeing with him in the sense that we have instinctively fear against new things especially when it has the potential to violate our privacy. It would be my pleasure to see the follow-up results of the study that allows foresight research to be conducted earlier to more proactively so as to proactively manage digital fears and concerns. First of all, in his presentation under title of Values of Confucian Society and Fate and Luck of Humanism in the Social Engineering Dimension of Artificial Intelligence, Yian J. Kim claims that in the era of the Fourth Industrial Revolution, the fate and luck of humanism should involve in an integrated dimension in terms of human life. He introduces the work of memes, which got my attention, as the source of power of self-realization. Human life, as he suggests, can be seen from the point of view of self-realization that ultimately aims for a perfect existence and the power of memes lies in their role as a means of self-realization. Ultimately, how the memes work becomes a mechanism by which humans can become cultural beings. In a way, there seems to be a kind of similarities between Aristotelian teleology and the way that the memes work. My question is whether the memes are unique enough to be categorized as being totally different from Aristotelian causes, especially with regard to the efficient cause and the final cause. Aristotle also presupposes the telos of human beings that purses to be the perfect state of the soul in the given life on earth. First of all, Su Yun Wang's main point in her Can AI Trigger Demand Comparison of Say's Law and Demand Control, as I see it, is twofold. She, on the one hand, performs the comparison of Say's law and the theory of demand control in terms of their efficacy in the market history. On the other hand, she also suggests drastic changes in the market, which are brought by AI technologies. As she suggests, AI is exerting new influence on supply and demand theory that has been discussed for centuries, especially by reducing the uncertainty and randomness in the market. I wonder whether these changes brought by AI are completely new ones in the human history. It is also known that the mass production system has been experiencing the changed patterns of consumers in the market especially since the era of postmodernism. It seems true that, as she suggests, AI is best fitted to forecast the personalized supply and demand patterns, but those patterns were there already before the era of AI. I also wonder whether we could see that AI responds to the diversified demands of consumers more than ever. I would appreciate if she lets us know whether there are any further theoretical attempts, or brand new theories as we call, that hinges upon the AI-specific changes in the market. First of all, in Implications of Artificial Intelligence, focusing on the context of metaverse and its meaning, Sang Hyung Shin astonishingly delineates his line of thought about the implications of artificial intelligence especially on the societal level. Using the term metaverse, he deliberately conjoins two worlds of different kinds, the virtual world and the real world. Human intelligence and artificial intelligence shares much despite their differences and conjoins in various forms of reality. He stresses that we should adopt the technology proactively the technology of AI so that we can live a harmonized life in one of the forms of reality. I appreciate him being provided abundant knowledge he shares in his presentation. First of all, Alfonso Ballesteros, Avantika Tiwari, and Tomas Rybeck in a sense share some concerns that digitization and artificial intelligence brings about into the society. Alfonso Ballesteros, in Digitocracy Ruling and Being Ruled, talks about the effects of digitization in terms of human capacities including emotion, and sign-using capacities. 
Because human beings are emotional and cognitive existence, we feel and recognize the fearful situations in the digitized society. Avantika Tiwari in Fighting the Machine or to Fight Capitalism and Tomas Rybeck, Human Work in the Digital Economy, observe the impact of artificial intelligence and digital technology on economical life of human beings. Avantika Tiwari explains by utilizing the pandemic situation we are facing nowadays, where polarization in terms of economic power persists and becomes more manifest. People who already belong to the upper class in the capitalistic society mobilize every kind of method to strengthen their privileged status, while the relatively marginalized individuals require secure ways that help their life sustainable in that situation. Tomas Rybeck also warns about the disastrous situation in the post-work world where we experience loss of meaning and an impossibility of human flourishing as a result of dominant digital economy in the society. First of all, one final comment is that I saw a call for humanity in all the presentation though in various forms, which I believe the last thing we should defend, but in an open-minded manner. Thank you again for having the opportunity to share.